Hey, thanks for joining and tuning into our channel. Um, normally we do cycle cars, and today's kind of a cycle cart related video. We're going to make a shrinking stump. Some people call it different things, but it's basically a stump. We're going to dish a hole into it, uh, like a bowl shaped hole, using a circular saw, and that's going to allow us to shrink aluminum or steel to make the complex shapes we see in cycle cart tails, like in the tail section. Um, so, on my last project, this is the, the wire form to create this, this shrink here. I do a lot of hammering and shrinking to get this to curl around and curve around. So I was at Ed Smoot's shop, Smooth Engineering. He had a shrinking stump work really well. I decided I wanted one for home. So that's what we're going to make today. Uh, we're going to smooth this out with a grinder, but we're also going to dish it out with a circular saw. So let, uh, let's show you the tools we're using. Okay, so here's the basic tools. So we're going to start with some safety. We're going to use some gloves. We're going to wear eye protection. Uh, I've got a tape measure. Uh, this is basically going to be a, a rough, approximately seven inches, uh, the dish, because that's how big the saw blade is. Uh, we marked it out on the stump, just made a circle so we kind of knew where to cut. Circular saw. I might, I'm going to try this blade. I might have to go to a, to a coarser blade. We'll see how it goes. Um, but for smoothing it all out later, we're going to use this four and a half inch grinder. I've got a various assortment of flapper discs, uh, 36 grit, 60 grit, 120 grit. That's to smooth it all out, because after we get it all cut and roughed in, uh, we're going to have a lot of cuts to smooth out. Uh, the 36 grit one is going to really take it down quickly uh, to get to a basic and just kind of progressively smooth it out to where you get a smooth surface. We want a smooth surface so that we're not, when we're pounding aluminum on it, we're not putting marks into the aluminum. We want a pretty smooth surface. Uh, so I picked the best spot on the trunk to start with, or on the stump rather, and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about on that. Okay, so what we did, so the, you can see this is rough cut from the, from the um, chainsaw when we cut the tree down. This is a giant tree in my front yard, a mesquite tree. Um, beautiful, big, shady tree, but it's giantly messy. If you've got a mesquite tree, you know what I'm talking about. It drops pea pods and leaves everywhere. It was destroying our yard. So we got rid of the trees, but I saved a big chunk of it. And you see this is pretty rough. There's a little branch here, so I'm not going to cut into that area. I picked a 7-inch area that's going to be fairly clean of, of cracks. I know there's a little crack here, but that's going to be okay. Um, Staying away from the edge because we don't want to be too close to the edge. We want to have a little bit of surface there to give it strength and also space for I can make a deeper on one end and a little shallower on another. And I'm saving a flat area because uh, when you do your shrinking, you're going to want a small area to hammer the shrinks out to, to flat, not to flatten them, but to uh, capture the shrinks or the tucks so that your uh, aluminum or steel is actually shrunk and you can work it to where you smooth it out mostly and then you take it to the English wheel and finish the smoothing. So I've already uh, made a six or seven inch circle in the center right here. So we're gonna get started on cutting. So that's the next step. Okay, we're gonna make our first couple cuts. So what I've got the saw is set at its deepest spot, which is about two and a quarter inches roughly. Um, we can get a little deeper with the grinder, but for now that's gonna give us a starting point. So I'm gonna make my first couple cuts. I'm just gonna make X shapes kind of all the way around we were moving enough material to either chip it out or take the grinder to it and bust out all the little pieces that in between those slivers are going to be created. So uh, let's see how this goes. So almost to kind of jerk around. So be super careful. You don't want this coming back into your leg. So let's be safe out there, sex carters. Saw blade keeps stopping occasionally, so I'm gonna see if I can tighten that up. Maybe it's a little loose. Yeah, it's a tiny bit loose. It's uh, working the saw that hard, it gets hot, I guess. Maybe it just loosened up a little bit. Let's try that again. <laughs> Cut 
cut and tons and tons of cuts. And after I get a few more cuts made, we're going to come in and start chiseling out all those little tiny ribbons of uh, wood to make this dish. So you see it's already got a pretty good hole in there. I can almost stick my pinky all the way down the side there. All the way down in there. So it's about, you know, two and a quarter inches deep according to how much plunge your saw has. If you've got a bigger saw, I don't know if they make one bigger or not, but you might get it deeper. But we can always make it deeper later with the um, grinder. So I want to cut a few more pieces and uh, we'll get to chiseling. So I think I pretty well got this cutting done with the saw. So now it's time for chisels and hammers. We're just going to chisel these pieces out of here. So we're going to go around it like that and chisel, chisel, chisel. A bunch of chiseling done, so we're gonna keep going around chiseling, chiseling, chiseling. Uh, this is looking really rough, but that's okay because that's what the grinders are for. We're gonna smooth all this out with the grinding wheel, uh, take about a bunch of material out of here, and get that nice and opened up so we got a nice deep hole. So you can see right now we're a couple inches deep, and uh, that's gonna work out really well. Okay, so I've got the chisel pretty well done. I went back in with the saw a little bit, and I was having trouble controlling. I see these couple swipes, but that's okay. I'm gonna have an area I want to have a shallower scoop on it, so this will be the deep spot, that'll be the shallow spot, and it'll all work out just fine. So I stopped using the saw because I was afraid it was going to cut my leg and uh, didn't really want to do that. So I'm just going to take it to the grinder now. And this is a U36, so I'm going to put a fresh one on in a minute see how this goes real quick. Yeah, I'm going to need a fresh one. I'm going to need a fresh disc. That's not cutting enough, so we'll get a fresh disc on and continue. So that was just a few minutes of grinding out. I see I've got quite a bit of marks in here still. So I'm going to grind these back till these marks all go away. This area is going to get a little deep because I'm going to dish this shallow, a little shallower because I got these deep cuts, which I really kind of screwed that up. But maybe I'll have to wood putty those or something. Um, but I'm trying to smooth all these out, so we'll come back to videotape that in a moment. Okay, so slight change of plan. So I've got these bad marks over here. I decided what I'm gonna do when I looked at my wire form. I wanted a couple different profiles. I wanted a deep profile and a slightly shallower profile. So what I'm gonna do is I mark this out kind of where these marks are at to the edges. And I'm gonna grind out the rest. But I'm gonna take the deep part out. I've made my cut half as deep as this. So it'll be less of a slope. That's my idea anyway. So I have a shallower area here, a deeper area here for different profiles to work into the stump. So when you're shaping something you have more than one one spot to work from so that's what i'm doing i'm going to go ahead and cut this with a saw and do the same process with chisel and grinder i uh, see the rest of this is pretty smooth i got a little more grinding to do here to get these last little bit of cuts out of here but that's looking pretty good i'll go a little deeper here as well but um yeah i'm pretty happy with it so far so i'm going to make some more cuts and more grinding and we'll see what she looks like Okay, so I think I've done all I can with the, the heavy duty grinder. Uh, there's a couple slits in here, errant marks from the saw I'm going to fill with wood putty. Uh, you see there's a bunch of marks in here from the 80 grit, the 60 grit, and the 120 grit. Um, so I'm going to take some 80 grit hand and just hand sand these little grooves out of here. Try to get this as smooth as I can. Uh, I've already kind of smoothed off the top. It's pretty flat and do a little more hand sanding. These little tiny cracks I'm going to try to fill with some putty so hopefully they won't print through when we're doing some aluminum forming. I've already checked, uh, and this is pretty cool, I want to show you this. I've, uh, I've got my original wire form here, and I was looking, of course you can use this as a shrinking station, but you could also maybe use it as a metal forming to where you could just hammer the metal into form. So I was looking at the shape here to get this little piece right here that's almost the same radius as this top. And if I flip it around this way, here, scooch over this way a little bit, um, you'll see this is almost the same is this area so the shapes this shape is almost perfect for right there as I'm hammering it in you just hammer that shape into there and you get this nice con concave so different shapes if you kind of rotate it around are different this is a little steeper over here which that won't really work for this one but it'll really work well for this so I slide this around this way that has this top section right here darn near perfect 
shape for what this wire form would be. If I just hammer that in there, just hammer it flat into that area, bam, it's got that shape. So that's kind of the idea, part of the idea for it. So I think we're gonna call that the end of this video. Uh, the next couple steps, I'm not really gonna show you because I don't have the parts of the stuff to do it right now. Uh, we're gonna final sand this out, get all these little marks out of here, fill it with wood putty, and then we're gonna coat it with linseed oil to protect it. Uh, it's gonna stay in the garage, but um, for right now, we're gonna call that the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about cycle carts or metal forming, I'll be glad to help you out. I'm not an expert metal former, just a hobbyist who wants to share what I know. So uh, thanks for watching the video. Have a great day. And also follow Arizona Cycle Carts.